Hello everyone. So welcome to my channel Physics Through Computation. So earlier I have uploaded uh, many lectures on molecular dynamics. So one included the theory of molecular dynamics and another one is the code of molecular dynamics where I have shown that this energy, kinetic energy and potential energy graph with respect to time that they, that system when the system equilibrates they fluctuate around an average value. So and also I have shown uh, the videos where so shown in the video in an another video that uh, the position initialization in molecular dynamics. So whether where you can use the uh, lattice configuration like a cubic lattice or FCC lattice as your initial configuration. But in the lecture I have mentioned in the lecture where I describe the code of the molecular dynamics. There I describe uh, there I told that uh, to general you can also use the random initialization condition. So today I will talk about uh, the random initialization. So if you haven't gone through the lectures earlier previous lecture about molecular dynamics, so you can go to my channel physics through computation and you can have a look on that. And first you uh, must go through the molecular dynamics theory and then you can see the how to generate see the generation of these uh, lattice types, how to generate the lattice type like QB, FCC or any type of lattice. There is a uh, there is also a video on the uh, theory of the generation of lattice so I will just provide the links in the description so you can just have a look on that and so okay so today I will talk about the random position initialization in molecular dynamics so here uh, so what you need to do is basically you need to specify the sigma which is the radius of the particle and uh, you need also specify the number of particle and also you need to specify the density which is rho so here uh, the problem is that in the random po initial position initialization so if you uh, increase the density a lot this box size lx ly lz will decrease and then what happens is that it will take more and more time to accommodate the particles randomly so that is one of the drawback of this type of mod this type of initialization so that's why it, you must keep the density in such a way that it will it will complete within your uh, time uh, time constant Okay, so here I have taken uh, sigma to be equal to 1 and the number of particles in uh, my system is 216 and the density I have taken 0 0.7 and as you can see this Lx is basically the number of particles by divided by rho to the power 1 third and similarly as it is a cubic box so Lx will be equal to Ly will be equal to Lx and Lz will be equal to Lx. And now, uh, as it is in three dimension, this uh, three part uh, three particle position x, y, z. I have in, uh, this array. I have just just uh, defined, and then basically the some other variable, some integer, and some real variable. So now I basically open a file which is basically random pause uh, random underscore pause dot x, y, z. So why x, y, z? That will be one question one can arise. Uh, so the x, y dot x, y, z format I have saved because. Uh, to visualize it in jmol software so jmol is a software where you can visualize the uh, data uh, data file uh, with the extension dot xyz so that is a very good software to visualize 3d 3d data so that's why i use uh, jmol you can also that's why i use this dot uh, xyz format and you can also use some other type of data file like dot dat or dot txt and you can visualize in other software also uh, in gnu plot or uh, any other software of your choice okay so this is the file i am opening and now so what i am doing is basically first i generate random number r and which is uh, this random number is the intrinsic random number of the fortran co fortran language so it will generate random number this r will be in the range 0 to 1 so it will generate random number within 0 and 1 and now i basically I basically now multiply this r by lx so that's why my numbers will be from uh, 0 to lx and this and this xyz will be in the box of 0 to lx 0 to ly and 0 to lz anywhere any any random point between them so so I I, I choose this uh, position of the first particle randomly now what I am doing so now I am going from second particle to total number of particles and I am generating the same uh, the same uh, generating in the same way as I am doing earlier the random position of the second particle and so on so let's consider two first so now I generate the uh, random position of the second particle 
so now uh, i define another loop which which is j going from 1 to i minus 1 which is basically so if uh, i is 2 then basically it will go from 1 to 1 that means j is 1 and then i basically calculate distance between the uh, j -th particle and the i -th particle so here i is 2 and j is 1 so first particle position we already know so that's why we basically subtract that first particle position minus the second particle position and then basically we calculate dx dy dz and now also always we need to as we are uh, in the so as uh, as we are applying this periodic boundary condition so we need to also apply the period pvc for the uh, displacement so that's why we are applying this pvc using this uh, nearest integer function which is nint and so this is how you can apply the periodic boundary condition so whenever it will it will be outside the box it will uh, so uh, it will just take care of that fact so now we basically calculate the distance dr uh, the magnitude of the displacement which is basically d square of dx square plus dy square plus dz square and now if dr is less than equal to sigma then we again go to 11 11 is what 11 is this so now uh, so what it means so it means that when you choose a particle second particle so first particle position we all uh, we have already chosen but now we when we choose the second particle and then basically we calculate the distance uh, of the second particle with this with all other particles initialized earlier like for second particle it will be the first particle we have initialized so we basically calculate the distance with respect to that particle and then we apply the pvc and then we basically calculate the magnitude of the distance and then if it is less than equal to sigma then we are not assigning that particle we are again choosing the random position of that particle because it cannot be less than sigma because uh, of the overlapping uh, this will be the overlapping case when it will be equal, uh, less than equal to sigma so that is not uh, parmi uh, that is not permissible in this type of configuration random configuration so now when n is equal to 3 then basically let's say we have initialized the first particle and also initialized the second particle from this condition and so let's say for n is equal to i is equal to 3 then basically this uh, this will generate the third uh, particle position and j going from 1 to 2 so what we will do is basically calculate the third particle uh, displacement uh, magnitude of the displacement of the third particle with respect to the first and second particle if that is true then basically we will uh, as we will just accept this or otherwise it will go to 11 it will again the select the random position of the third particle so likewise it will go on and unless until uh, it basically covers all the total number of particles which is the n part uh, so it will uh, go on and then it will finish and then it will come out of the loops and now so what i am doing is basically uh, so as i already said that i am plotting in jmol i will be plotting in jmol so that's why i need to uh, uh, use some specific uh, uh, protocols of dot xyz file the first one i have already mentioned that it should be of um, the extension dot xyz and now uh, the second uh, protocol is basically you need to write the number of particle in the file and then you need to write some comment or you can just keep a blank page as well and you can write he here whatever you want so as i am generating random position so that's why i wrote random position it's just a comment so jem will just take it as a comment and then basically from i going from one to n part I just write this x y z coordinate and this n basically is the type of the molecule here n means the nitrogen you can also take uh, a each hydrogen or any other molecule of your choice and then basically x y and z so this is basically uh, this thing we need to write because of the coloring scheme of the jmol so nitrogen has a specific color carbon has a specific color so if you just change the change this n then basically change this uh, value to some other at other atom then basically the color of the atom will change and then basically we need to you need to give a space at the end and you need to close the file so this is how basically we can initialize the ra position randomly so now let's have a look on the code uh, how it goes on and how much time it is taking so so g fortran minus o3 which is the compilation flag or optimizable uh, this is uh, random uh, process2.f90.slash a.out 
and now as you can see as the density is little bit higher so that's why uh, it will basically it is generating faster so random post dot xyz has been generated and if you see the data structure as i am written there so data structure will be like this okay so i need to open it with gedit because beam will show this thing uh, okay so here is the data structure as you can see so it is 216 and then uh, basically the comment and then n n n n n and then x y z position and so on and there is this blank space in the at the end so now what i will do is basically i need to write jmol and then random uh, pause dot x y z now if we just type enter then basically uh, jmol will plot it will take some time but it will eventually plot the configuration yeah okay yeah so this is the configuration so let's zoom it little bit less and now if you just want to don't want to see the bond then basically you need to just select bond none and then uh, you can also display the bounding box so this is the box and these are the particles so as you can see it is the particle this is in a cube the particles position has been initialized randomly in a cubical box so this is how we can generate position randomly in a side a cubical box and but if you just decrease so as i am mentioning that if you just uh, if you just increase the density then basically it will take more and more time so let's increase a little bit and let's see what happens so let's open a new terminal okay Okay, it will take some time because uh, if you increase the density box size will be decreased and then it will take some time to complete so this is how basically this goes and depending on your uh, depending on your density of your choice you can just uh, select this and then you can just specify the density here and you can just generate the random position but one point is that it will take more time if you uh, increase the density so and also you can save this plot clicking this file and then export and then export image so you can just save whatever format you want and if you want to install jmol so i have given already given the command for installing the jmol and also the link so in the description box so thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel uh, to learn more about computational physics and stay tuned and stay safe thank you